issue of Occupy yes. learning to deal with its internal conflicts and difficulties openly mm. and honestly and, right. and courageously, yeah. that's not going to go away. No. And we're not going to be effective unless right. we Do that. start dealing with it. Yeah, absolutely. As difficult as it is and uh-huh. as painful and embarrassing and smelly as it <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still wish we'd have been in the tents for six weeks. We would have taken care of all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but what is this? we are Occupy Sacramento. We're a unique entity. Yeah. And every Occupy is out there seeking its identity. There's a thousand just in the United States right? doing the same thing. Yep. Who are we? What are we about? What are we here for? Don't tell me. Don't hand me the instruction booklet. Right. We want to figure it out for ourselves. We have ourselves. to figure it out for ourselves. Yeah, they're all doing that. Yeah. And it's the genius of the movement, but it's also the, the vulnerability of the movement mm-hmm. because we're so, you know, what are you about? We're about it all. Yeah. We're everything. We're about so much. <clears throat> it's, all, it's all things we are passionate about. Yeah. David, I'm sorry I have to sit away, but I just want you to know I'm so glad you're doing this. I'm oh. just keeping this distance because of the dog, but I really thank you for doing this. Oh, thank, I thank you. Thank you for everything sa- you just said. Thank you for saying that because I have my my doubts about selling something that people don't want. You know? I want. <laughs> I and, and you're right. Don't hand me an instruction booklet. I really got that part, especially. Really, well, we have to hammer out the identity of Occupy Sacramento ourselves. And it's going to be messy and difficult and contentious and ugly and crying and gnashing of teeth. But if you avoid all that, it's you're not you're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. I agree. So we see the the consequences of it come out in in general assemblies when you see all this conflict and suspicion, working out things. Larry, in the GA instead of someplace where it could actually be worked out. You don't want to work out all these individual conflicts in the General Assembly. You want to say, well, can you take that over there and talk about that yourselves? And they say yes, but they don't. They just shuffle it and you keep building up all these little things that he did this and he did tell me all this. What did you say? What did he say? And it's instructions, you know. You start protecting your turf and taking care of yourself and not getting you know, off and off in situation. And it just takes away from this. Here we go. I love you all. I think you're all beautiful. I think we're all beautiful and wonderful. And if we can just get past this little small step which is looking wonderful. But we, it's a skill, you know, it's a skill set. It's a skill develop. set. <laughs> and we got to start developing it. Yeah. Look at what we're doing with these dogs right now. You know, he can't stare at him. We know what that means. You uh, know. Are you staring at him? No, you? he's staring at him. <laughs> he's giving him an her. evil eye. Yeah, that's a, you know, come on. <laughs> you know, so we got us a skill set. Well, we're doing good here. Yeah, we're, we're doing great. Good. So I'm going to yes. your uh, Well, the, may I? Are you, please, are you please, just, just I'm, I'm talking too much. We're, we're not, well, we haven't started officially yet. So. I'm sorry, <laughs> David. I can almost hear you, but then the car goes by. And, so I know that I've just recently been through an experience with Occupy Out Grove. And was and which I be, finally had to wind up walking away. Part, part of it was walking away. Part of it was being driven by a stick. A stick. Yeah. I became the enemy image. Uh huh. Because I stood up for somebody else who had been the previous enemy image. Yeah. Yeah. And um. And that no amount of saying, "Look, guys, it's the bank we're against." This, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry if I rubbed you the wrong way there. Yeah. Like, can't we talk about it? Yeah. No, we cannot. No. So, um, 
what I'm getting at is we can destroy ourselves. I've seen it happen. I'd like to think we're indestructible, but we can't actually tear this apart. I can't read my signs. Your bike is blocking my signs. Your needs aren't getting met. I'm really upset. My needs are getting met. And oh, much better. Thank you. Sorry. What I would say to them is... Ow, it smells so dope. Yeah. Whew, good weed. Nonviolent communication would help. Uh, GA facilitation would help. Um, we can learn how Wall Street figured out how to make decisions. But by that time, I was the enemy image. Yeah. It was too late. Yeah. So what I'm getting at, again, is... <laughs> it's absolutely against our policy to force anything. And yet, there's part of me that says, we need to teach the GA... This, these skills are as important as... We're, we're going to be dropped down in the Alaskan wilderness. How are you going to find water? How are you going to get along with each other? I, th I think that it's that vital. Because Absolutely. I insist we succeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I suspect some, of, some occupiers will fail for just that reason. They'll get so insular and, self and defensive and self-protective that they will collapse and they'll stop because it's not fun they're not happy they're sharing their anxieties and their unhappiness and pretty soon you say what am I doing here why do I want to come I got enough unhappiness and misery in my life and if this if coming here doesn't uplift you doesn't make you feel like something good is happening in my life then you're going to walk away and you say I don't want to be I got enough problems so, and if they see themselves as a, um, oh. hey. Alright, another way I looked, and this is me looking at Occupy Old Grove, is like they lost their sense of mission. Like we're, this is huge, people. This is, this is the stars in the sky big. This is the world. Right. This is the whole world is looking to us for answers. That we we started the ball rolling, and they say, "Now, would you pick it up and do something with it?" Because this world is going into the toilet. If you're so smart, America, come up with some solutions. And instead, we give them Newt Gingrich. We give them what? Oh, Newt Gingrich. But I do think that um, by learning, by having the confidence that we can work things out. Even, you know, I can't stand your face, but I can still work with you. Yeah. If we believe that that's a possibility, then we can keep our eyes on the heavens. Yes. And, like, Elk Grove lost their ability to believe they could work with people they had identified as the enemy image. And, so, and, and they didn't have any other image in their head of, you know, I was saying, I don't need to be liked by you guys, right. you know, it's really okay. Right. That pissed them off further. Well, you were an, an outsider invading their territory, and you're automatically suspect. Actually, I was there at the beginning. Really? From the beginning. Really? You just, you yeah. just weren't what they wanted to hear. No, I did. Are you talking about Elk Grove? Yeah. yeah. Well, but, we got to be different, and we got to figure out how to be different. And we got to figure it out ourselves. So nobody's going to come down on high and say, okay, here's the yeah. book on how to That's do it. this. Because this ain't ever, never been done before, as far as I know. What and we're trying you, to do is not been done before. So and don't we've you know, make the book. when democracy started, the feudal, the serf said, I don't want your democracy. I got food on the table and a roof over my head. You take you and your fancy democracy right. and go away. You're scared. You're going to get me killed. You're going to get me killed. You and your fancy ideas. Right. And, and we don't even have a name yet for this thing that we're working on except democracy. That's right. Oh, which, by the way, i got to tell you guys. Since I started wearing this shirt, people, I didn't understand why people were smiling at me. I'd be mean, walking down the street, just, it happened when I was going to get this shirt. It was What's like, it say? Oh, Help me see it. I democracy don't even... won't fix itself. Oh, there you go. Okay. And, and I finally saw somebody read my shirt, look at me, and smile, and realize, 
just this word democracy is making people smile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't see the Occupy on the back. Mm-hmm. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I didn't expect that to have that happen. Something we all, I think, believe in. Mm-hmm. And we think it's been betrayed, and we think mm-hmm. it's been turned into something that really isn't democracy, and we feel it's been, it's a lie, you know. And it hurts us, and it, it makes us angry, it and it makes us want to scream and do something. And here we all are, screaming and wanting to do something. And half the time we spend screaming at each other. Because you're spending, you're doing something that doesn't work with me in a hum, a hum, a hum. And I, so much of that, you know, um, you don't have to like me, but we should be able to get along. I can even get past that because most of the times I don't like you, you know. If we sat down and really kind of figured it out, what it was that was, we go, oh, well, gee, I didn't quite understand. But now that I talk to you, I kind of get it. But if we never do that, all we do is live, you know, hold on to that. So that's the skill set. The saying, I got, a, I got a problem, but I think we can deal with this. And I think we could be friends. I think we could actually be close. But we got to deal with this crap. And our culture doesn't, our culture teaches us to avoid competition. Exactly. Exactly. Culture puts us all in competition with each other. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it teaches, so, but don't get comforted. And teaches us to be suspicious of each other and distrustful of each other. Say, what's your hidden agenda? What are you trying to pull? What are you selling? What do, you know? I know it looks good on the surface, but I bet there's something going on here. And the slicker you are, the more suspicious you are. So that's, that's an obstacle we have to, to deal with. Just just to move forward. And that's exactly, in El Cuervo, when I would reach out to the person who hated me, or I don't think he knows me enough to hate me, but who was doing the most to agitate against me, and I would say, we're working on the same thing, we're, we're on the same side, remember when we used to at the beginning wave signs, and all the things I could think of. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, I read the letter, I was like, okay, this is going to touch his heart. And he wrote back and he said, I know the kill him with kindness trick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You see, and it was like I don't like the way you're looking at him. Um, so that, so what you just said was that, that we're taught competition. We're taught the smoother I was, or the more, um, the more persuasive sincere, you were, the more persuasive, the, right? more, the more suspicious you were. I don't trust people. to do this. I want to hear from more people. I'm, I think the, the whole idea of this is to make sure everybody gets, says something. And I want to hear from, well, no, while eating. you're chewing, are you, if you're, are you chewing right now? No. Say no. something. Please. <laughs> Say Go something. Uh, <laughs> contribute. Where, where, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? In general or? About so, kind of what we're... Um, <laughs> Sorry, I, you don't have an informed opinion. That's all right. I'll get there one soon. Of the, one of the best we'll ways I've heard Occupy um, Occupy's values expressed to me, which I really loved, was that we want our organizations to act selflessly rather than selfishly, which I thought was just a great crystallization of what we're talking about here. That it's that I want. I want my I want my government, I want my corporations, I want my schools to all act selflessly for the benefit of everyone, not just for their own their own organizational and personal benefit. Um, and for me, that's a huge thing. I mean, to crystallize that, to legalize that, you can't. That's that's the hard yeah, thing no, to, to translate can't. that to other people. I mean, when you say that to someone, they say, "Well, you can't pass a law that says that." Well, right, true, well, but I, but I'm almost I'm not I mean it's a, I'm not interested in passing a law about it. I'm interested in changing the, the paradigm, the that culture, is where right? Be the change that right. you see in others. Actually, Absolutely, is, that's a paradigm. Yeah, because you can't just say here. Do I want? You. 
right, you have to uh, demonstrate it. Yeah. That's what and people Occupy just start has following you. Right. Demonstrate. That's why start developing when a community people around do that. things that are destructive to Occupy, it wounds me because they're, they're hurting me. They're hurting this occupation. They're hurting this movement by representing it as something ugly or divisive or angry or confrontational or. And I don't think that's what we're about. I, you know, at least that's not what I'm here for. I think there's a, a move towards a healing community and selflessness. Try and tell somebody to be selfless. Right. Yeah. Just learn learn it's to be hard. a little more selfless. <laughs> Particularly amongst the egos no that we that. have here. Yeah. We no have big egos that. and big ideas and big, you know. Right. And say, well, that's all right. Just be selfless about it. Well, that, you know, that's tough. Yeah. The only thing that trumps selflessness is community, where people start really believing in the community, really believing that we are with each other, yeah. and that we're supporting each other, we care about each other, we want each other to succeed, and we're not in a competition to see who can be the most occupier. <laughs> we're everybody trying to give what they got the best they can to contribute and try not break the system down, try not to interfere with the system, try to be a source of healing rather than a source of vision. And it's all a skill set that we have to deal with and learn as a community. You can't just hand you a form that says do these things, right. you know. Right. That's why they worked it out for six weeks in tents, you know, yeah. fighting it out, everything, throwing uh -huh. things, and I can imagine what it must have been like. Uh -huh. But we skipped all that, and we didn't yeah. get to do all that, yeah. and we got to do it anyway. Yeah. And uh, this is seems to me the beginning of that. Uh -huh. For us to actually be honest and say it like it is, and stop worrying about stepping on toes, and stop worrying about who it's going to offend or who's going to be upset because it doesn't mean no, 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 no. We just start laying it out and and letting the chips fall where they may and if you can't stand the heat in this particular kitchen that's fine maybe you shouldn't be in this kitchen but in this kitchen it's all open it's all on the table it's uh, there are no um, taboos there are no you don't get to talk because we don't like your style it's it's this it's what it is and it's scary and it's difficult But we're not going to get another chance at this, I don't think. This, this is our shot. I would like to ask if we're going to do this on a regular basis. I'd like to actually suggest, please, let's do it. Can I, I know like there are other people who would feel wonderful about being here. So... We have it on the calendar right now, from now until, and not that it couldn't go beyond, but okay, wow, until like March 3rd, at which point, this hasn't passed through the GA yet, but there's the people, there are people trying to figure out and pin down a date and a location for a strategy forum. Is that what Internal we're Internal strategy forum. No, this is, this is something that David's been wanting to do a long time, and all of a sudden I saw this between what he's wanting to do and this ultimate strategy form on the third. Plus, Sean Laney was kind of getting where he wanted to take a break on the So I thought this this, this alignment <laughs> and basically stars. kind of tried to facilitate it and got it on the calendar. So it's basically this Saturday, next Saturday, next Saturday, next four and Saturdays. What time? Two to four. Two to four, and it's called what? Hey, uh, Vision, values, and priorities. <laughs> I told Nancy, Anne's been wanting something like this for a long time too, yeah? Us old folks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, us young folks. Sorry, that was a little sexy. Like, ages. I, I, but, I mean, I, I, I just. I the unique advantage. Yeah. 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 And I, I do uh, think that. So, so let me repeat that back. The next four Saturdays, two to four, the vision. Vision, values, and priorities, right? Vision, no, values, and what was the last yeah. one? Priorities. Vision, values, and priorities. Vision, values, two to four, open to everybody. Yeah. That's right. Excellent. Welcome. Hi. 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 One of the primary things that I wanted about this is to make sure that everybody speaks. Everybody. I want everybody who comes to this thing 
to at least open up their mouth and say something. I don't want any silence. Anybody cut out, anybody, even if you just stand up and say, I don't care to speak, I still want to hear from you. Because there's just been too many groups and too many situations where, I'm sorry, we don't have time to talk about that. I've got too many points to cover. I've got another couple chapters to do. No, no, no. This is the exact opposite of that. We don't have any time frame. We don't have any pressure. We don't, there's no reason we're not wasting time. There is no time to be wasted. The inclusiveness is what we're looking for. So that everybody feels like they're part, like everybody buys in, like everybody feels that they have a voice. And if they want to stand up and say, hold it, I've got something to say, that we'll stop and we'll listen. Just not and say, I'm sorry, you're not one of the major players, we don't really care about what you say. Or you don't really talk very well, you can't seem to express yourself very well, so we don't like listening to you. I want to go the opposite direction. I want to make sure... Uh, 11 year old will have a chance to say hey my classroom we got something to say and I say hey bring it I want to hear about it because that's I think that's what's going to make this work is that sense of inclusiveness that you're part of the community you're not just a, a observer and watching other people go through the you know I want everybody to feel body and and I don't know how that's done. I'm not exactly sure how that's done. But I think it's partly by trying. Let's just make sure. <laughs> make sure that everybody gets... Because it's too easy for the chatterboxes like me and like other people. To just go on and on and on and on. And everybody else gets cut out. And I, you know, that frustrates me when I see that happen. Please. Okay, on that note. Awesome. Um, <laughs> well, uh, there was a gathering today at 16th Street to protest the the uh, what looks like the looming war in Iran. And a lot of people, um, we got a pretty good turnout. We got probably 100 people. Oh, my God. And uh, the thing was that it seemed like some of the people I talked to were unaware that any kind of Occupy was still going on here. They were like, what? Oh, really? You mean there's still stuff going on at Chavez? Oh, yeah, cool. And, um, there, it, there seems to be, I mean, I guess it's been generated through the MSM and, you know, through the conventional channels, this kind of idea that Occupy is over. And we really need yeah. to. Um, oh, yeah. We really need to be visible and let the let the community and the country know that it's not over. That it's just getting started. Yeah. I think that just across the country, groups like ours are defining themselves. They are seeking to define themselves. What are we? What are we? What What do we? What's different about us and Wall Street? We're not Oakland, we're not Davis, we're us. What is us? And that's, I think that takes effort. It just doesn't happen, like democracy, it doesn't just happen. It takes effort to define ourselves. And it takes some boldness and some willingness to tackle hard issues and discuss and disagree and throw hard balls and, and you know, play the game and take whatever comes and be grown-ups about it and be able to communicate with each other like grown-ups, you know? Try not to be so sensitive. Try to understand what people are trying to say rather than work on your argument before they're finished. These are skills that we can develop and that's how we develop trust. That's what's missing in this entire episode. It's what's missing in America is trust don't trust each other. I don't blame us for not trusting each other. We're taught not to trust each other. But we should be able to build trust. We should be able to create trust where it wasn't there before. And how do you do that? By being honest with each other, by being open with each other, by laying it out and saying, here it is. If you don't like it, I'm sorry, but here it is. And then we start trusting each other. But not before. And if anything, that's what I want to see this start to do, is to have a forum where 
here you can say it. You know, just here, here's the time to say it. I don't care if it's going to create a firestorm. Let's get it over with. Let's not have our firestorms in the GA. Let's have them here. And let's take as much time as it takes. If it takes the next six months to work this stuff out, oh, well. I don't think it'll take that long, but it takes as long as it takes. Otherwise, that's what preoccupies Occupy, is the, the conflicts and the differences and the difficulties and who's, who's the leader and who's taking us where and why and who and no, 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 no. we got to grow past that. Yes, otherwise, we'll be preoccupied. Exactly. Exactly. Ooh, I don't want to be the priest. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Sing. Thank you. <laughs> that was really good. That was. It, actually, it kind of took the front. I heard it be occupied. Huh? <laughs> I noticed Since that. Since you said I could sing. <laughs> but, yeah. Tiffany, please. Speak. Oh, wow. Well, I was just thinking about the trust part, and one of the things I'm really interested in is um, I've been looking into a lot, and I know Alex knows a little bit about this, and Morgan does about, oh, sorry, um, the, re the concept of a resource-based economy, which is, which is a completely different world economic monetary system. Yay, okay. I was reading about that on the computer, the Venus Project. Uh-huh, the Venus Project was the start, and then the Zeitgeist Movement kind of um, got a hold of it as sort of a promotional documentary series, and there's other people that are doing it, but the trust issue, the concept there, in a nutshell, is that right now, with our current, ex we only survive by exchanging what we have with one another and you only survive if you have something to exchange. We have a monetary system. It could be a barter system the same problems would be there. Basically there are, as they catalog them, there are like five to ten depending on how you look at it, like I won't go into them or whatever, but just this is a nutshell just thing I want to put out there. Problems with the system that are inherent in it and one of the main negative outcomes is that we can't really trust one another. In order for me to survive, that's a strong need to survive, I have to prioritize things like trying to get you to purchase something that you may not really need. That doesn't engender trust. <laughs> I might have to, and that also creates massive pollution and waste on the planet. But we set up a system where survival, we need, we're, at, we're basically setting up a system where that's what you do to survive, and it has all these negative impacts, one of the ma major casualties being trust, and so the resource-based economy basically gets rid of the entire middleman of, of the money system, basically says, there's a lot to it, but essentially it's about figuring out what we have on the planet how to maximize the efficient production and usage of all those materials for the well-being of all humanity. Basically using the scientific method and the technology levels that we have today is totally doable and we could feed and house everybody on the planet. Very compelling evidence to suggest that. And in a way that, you know, wasn't possible in other systems that tried to do the same in the past within the monetary exchange-based economy. So when I hear trust, yeah, yeah. I know we can do a lot to engender it now, even within it, but I have the most faith in a fundamental change. Yeah, well, I like to kind of wrap things, you know, into small pieces. Sure. And I think what we're talking about, for me, is cooperative versus competitive economics. Yes. And that, that's the, the crossroads that we are at right now. Are we going to continue competitive, individualistic, basically hostile economics? Or are we going to look towards a cooperative community system of economics that is person-centered and all person-centered, not economic-centered, not profit-centered, not, you know. I think that's the crossroads we're at, and I think that's where Occupy fits in. Because I think we're distinctly cooperative as opposed to competitive. Yeah, yeah, practicing that. And we must practice cooperative 
rather than competitive. We must be the change that we wish to see in others, meaning we have to learn to be a cooperative community first. This is how we demonstrate it to the rest of the world. And that's, and I think is the only way that you can change hearts and minds is by demonstrating it through what you do, that what you do works better for everybody. And I hope, I hope that's what we're looking for, is how we can make, help that change take place. I think on some level, like, we kind of know that there's something wrong with the way we do things because we all kind of, subconsciously, we all kind of hope that our kids will be better people than us. We teach them, you know, we tell them, no, share, don't be selfish and everything. And then, but then what does the grown-up world show them? People that just want to get stuff and guard it with a gun, you, you know, it. but, you but it. it's like we kind of exactly. all... We all subconsciously, we hope that our kids will be better people than we were. But we don't know how to show them, you know, because we're... Because as we grow up, we kind of lose that childhood right. wonder or whatever. I don't right. want to sound too corny, but, right. you know, and we kind of just... We get told, well, you know, that's just the way it is. And, you know, we uh -huh. get told all these all these little, little grains of so-called truth. And, um, you know, but, but like we kind of all, in a way, we hope our kids will be better people than we were. But the system, Does that and, make sense? And it's well, sad because the system doesn't very support well. it. I mean, the system, for that, your child to survive in it, your child has to, in some level, at some way, kind of adapt to this system. That's why I want to do this. What's what That's we used to call said. sell out. You have to sell out. Right. You basically yeah. got to sell out. Bingo. You can't be a hippie. Oh you gotta sell out because you gotta live in this economic have world. <gasps> you have my sign! Yay. Thank you! Yeah, that's what happens. You sell your soul for the <laughs> devil's gold. That's what happens. But I think we can unlearn before we learn. I, I think we have to do a lot of unlearning before we can start learning. And that's what this process is, is unlearning a lot of conditioning and stuff that is, that's the way it's always been, that's the way it is, that's the way it's gotta be. A lot of us questioning, well, why? Maybe not. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe that's totally 100% wrong. Let's look at it. Let's look at it with fresh eyes, you know, with um, a look to reboot. Say, this ain't working. Let's really look at it from a different perspective, you know. Let's open up the field and start thinking big. <laughs> That's what that band-aid for bullet wounds. There's so many band-aids for bullet wounds. We'll put this band-aid on and this band-aid on. Oh, and there's another one. We'll put that on. And what do you got? You just, you've got to cure the bullet wounds. You've got to go dig in and pull out the bullet, the pain, and the dirt, and the but you've got to do it. And that's what we've been reluctant to do. Like the paste over stuff. And we just can't do that here. We can't do that here. And I... I can see how painful the process that is, but it's a, it's a painful process going through GA and watching all this pent up, pent up anger and frustration and fear and distrust. And say, what are we going to do about that? Yeah, sometimes not so pent up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes explode. <laughs> well, I want more people talking. Well, I talk sometimes. I'm just listening. I'm, well, I'm, I don't know. I'm. I'm I want more people. I, I Somebody's got a thought. Somebody. Are you starting? Are you saying? Huh? Are you starting to talk? No, he was looking at me and saying, "Why aren't you?" <laughs> I'm, I just, I'm just soaking it up right now. <laughs> Does anybody got something that's? Well, they want to. They want to say. Rabble, 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 rabble. Get some. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's okay, all. Okay, thanks, yes. Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got. I, I know I keep talking, but it's yeah. been a while. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Yeah, it's, really, <laughs> it's been a while. You've been very strong. I really feel very strongly that we need to continually inspire each other. That it is our job. And, and I wrote this one night to my the foreclosure group. An army moves on its stomach. And by that, they usually mean you got to feed an army. Well, I think we're a different kind of army. And it's not exactly a stomach. But we have to feed each other with hope, 
with success, with, with our, and then sometimes we have to offload. I'm so frustrated. And we just listen. You don't have to fix it. And then you come back and say, God, the greatest thing happened, right? But we have to feed each other. And we can't just sit around being brains on butts. We've got to. <laughs> what? Brains on butts? I've never heard that one. I like that. I, I just made that up. That's pretty good. What? Uh, write that down. Somebody write that one in my eye. <laughs> uh, we got it. I mean, like, I keep promoting We Go Dancing at the George Club, where they have a blues band. And it's free till 9 o'clock. And we drink a beer together, and we don't talk about this. <laughs> Except that won't happen. We will. Yes. But <laughs> it's too loud. It's too loud. You can't talk. That's the goal. <laughs> and that's how we feed each other. And we feed each other's spirit. Because that is the most important important thing is our spirits. If our spirits stay up, we're good. But if we just sit around in intellectual All work, left that right. is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, this is I'm a saying. different kind of work, I think, so, that we're doing right here a little bit. Different than, than what? Different than um, figuring out or just Right. Going through because we're connecting. Because you know, that, like, that's that you agree. Yeah, she agrees. She that's what I'm this. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying this, that this is it. This is work too. And dancing is I just a a another way of looking at it. Good idea. Let's I know go you wanted to get me. Yes, please. Yeah. That person right there. It went like this, <laughs> and then it went down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait a minute. You got to wait. TV media at first was here. <laughs> Had any radio media interview anyone in the last three months? Radio media? Uh -huh. I'm have not we, aware of any. Have we had any radio media? Oh, we well, really? occupy staff? Here, yeah. Has Sean? Sean's by, working by on something, and Autumn was. Like I don't know. Or Sean's talking, like that? Or talking with uh, Claire Channel or something. Yeah. Trying to start a dialogue. And I know Autumn was really in doing Autumn's some kind of radio something. show, but Autumn. I don't know if it happened. Oh, yeah, she was. What? what? Finish your thought. Finish your thought. So, question answer is we don't know. My Sacramento interested in doing radio program. I am. Would you like to do that? Would you like to have a spot? Yeah. Like a regular that and the listener area wouldn't be in Sacramento. It would be up in the foothills. Six to twelve hours. And how? How? I know there's a. A lot of urban outreach. There's an urban outreach committee. Uh, yeah. um, and, and it's important that that be there. It's actually a working group. Just but so you know. <laughs> there is, there is an opportunity in the next I know, we know. <laughs> period of time. I, I hesitate to put a specific time on it. And then within the that next six up. months, that we could be doing a webcast at a radio station. We will be covering uh, Amador, Calaveras, Tuolumne, and parts of the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valley. Part of it. And I'm just wondering if anyone has given thought to a radio program about Occupy and issues that that come up in Occupy and the issues that Occupy has chosen to address. Yeah. The, the, the problems for me, at least that I see, are who are the spokesmen? How do we figure out who they are? How do we know what they're saying? What are they saying? What do we stand for? What is it that we want to spread to the world? Do we have a clear vision? See, that's part of my reason for this, is that I think we have an incoherent vision of what we want to do and what we want to be. We have a lot of different people with a lot of different ideas and a lot of different specialties and a lot of different predilections and a lot of different sources that they get from. And everybody's saying, well, but if you just kind of listen to me, I think I could help you straighten this out. And then somebody else says, yes, yes, but after you listen to me when I straighten it out, no, 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 I think I've got it. I got it here. Please just... And I, it's, it's part of the source of conflict is that everybody well-meaning, wanting to do the right thing, but also wanting to kind of get everybody out of the way so that they can do the right thing. And everybody going, what? Well, I don't like being out of the way when I, I got something. We're all filled with wanting to give and, and we step on each other and we 
cross purposes with each other and we find ourselves more in conflict than and that's that's why I want this thing to create the healing community that's all kind of working on the same idea and willing to kind of put their own personal prejudices and predilections and styles and things kind of aside in order that we find commonality so that it's not a matter of me persuading you to come to my point of view or Tiffany or any so if you just listen to me things are gonna if we just start listening to each other in a really acute open-minded open-hearted way something wonderful might happen but it ain't gonna happen until we get past that thing in all of us it says if you just shut up for a minute and listen to me I think I could help you guys straighten this all out which is exactly what I'm doing right now but <laughs> no, it's not quite the same. <laughs> but I think you're getting it's just a subject that I want to make sure is explored yeah, yeah. and and struggled with and yeah you know, fought out, and there's some lack of politeness in it. There's some ugly, there's some net messiness and smelliness when you get down to that level, and you got to be willing to jump in and just get get your hands dirty, and and get used to the rough and tumble of real community, not faux community, not pretend community, but real community. What kind of community? The healing cooperative community is what I call it. Where we, we're cooperative and we're all trying to be a source of healing to each other and to the whole world. And we're all working on that sense of community, trying to, to build it. And if we find ourselves undermining it, or we, we say, hold it, maybe I'm, maybe I'm undermining the community here with what I'm doing. It feels like I'm doing the right thing, but maybe, maybe not. I think the topic of discussion is quite often like the biggest issue we face. Because a lot of the stuff I've been dealing with has been trauma and not like anything of substance. And that really like kills me day after day. Where I'm dealing with more drama than actual yeah. solution. I want to be dramatic about solution. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to be fighting it's, about. Yeah, yeah. But half the time I'm fighting about he said, she said. Can we get said, an amen? Amen, <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> brother. Yes, brother. Why is it you're addressing all this drama? Because they keep talking and they don't stop. <laughs> Seriously, they they keep talking and they it's like 40 minutes later, it's like an hour later, and they're still talking on the phone or they're still talking about this. Yeah. A lot of it's just like I don't want to be rude and cut them off and say like I don't care about you know what she said to you about this. You uh -huh. need to get over it. Uh -huh. But I'm trying to be polite about it and I don't really you know. <laughs> well, there's a venue where we can stop being polite with each other because we're all friends here, right? Yeah. I don't I don't have to have protect sometimes. your feelings. You can handle yourself. You're a big boy. No, 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 no. You know, you're not going to crumble and st <laughs> <We're> <laughs> How could you say such a thing? I'm having the vapors. <laughs> we're we're grown-ups here and we should be able to tussle and disagree and be mad for a week and come back later and say, "You know what you were saying? It's finally starting to make sense to me." There's just so much goodwill and good-heartedness and caring and passion caring. in this group. I see it there, and I say, how can we build that and, pu and push down the other stuff? I don't know, but I, we got to start talking about it. we got to start building whatever the skill set is to build community. we got to be start, got to start working on it. And I, I don't, God knows, we, not, no one person here has the answers. But what I do know is that a group of well-meaning, good-hearted people together are smarter than any one person in the, on the earth. A group is always smarter than any one individual. And that's what we depend on, is that this group all together is smarter than any one of us. And it's, the genius is in the community. Because we correct each other. We, we say, well, no, no, I think you got that wrong. And, and in a good-hearted community, you say, well, please, share it with me. I want to know. Rather than, who are you to be telling me what's right and wrong? We say, I want to be in a community. So I say, please, tell me. I want to know. 
even if it's in, it hurts my feelings or I want to know because to get from here to there we got to get past here and I'll I'll take the heat I'll put up with the pain I'll take the embarrassment I'll look like an asshole I don't care I will take it for the sake of the community for the sake of the body and the more we all develop that the more we begin to trust each other I think that's how we build trust when you see it and the other people say hey I I think I can trust that guy because I see the realness and when we all start sharing it it's an organic thing it grows it builds it it's infectious just like division and anger and hostility and competitiveness are infectious we have to somehow seek the infectious of the, the beauty the community the caring the what we all want what we all want together as a community is for something beautiful to happen okay. I've really run out of gas here no, <laughs> Please. Ready to pick I, up. Time for me to step in. um I like what you said about um, we're all we're all smart in some way and we contribute to creating something that's smarter than any of us. And so what I see us doing is physically being together, sharing ideas and looking for some way to move forward. But my context is, uh, is bigger, actually. My context is that I'm here because uh, a sudden awakening happened a year ago and it's global. Now, I just became awake that it was global, and I think this movement's been going on for a while. And I've sort of been going, yeah, those guys over there at the, the G8 meeting, or the G20, yeah, they got some, they're doing something right. I, I don't exactly know. Then all of a sudden, it, it seemed to go global at some point. I don't know when it was. The Middle East impressed the hell out of me. And so there's genius going on over there. There are lessons. There, there are some people that have a, a, a talent for bringing uh, and creating a, a space where there's such wisdom can get these spoken and shared. And I guess I'm wanting I'm wanting us to celebrate where the genius already is, that we already have it. Some of us, if I sit here in this group, I'm kind of in a little bit of a bewildered state. Like, I don't really know what's gonna come next. And what I know from watching the Middle East was, that's where they were. They just knew they had to get out in the street and say no, yep. right? Yep. And that was just like, I kept looking, you know, I kept saying, how are they gonna get anything done this way? <laughs> but they got it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's by showing up, it's by being flexible, open-minded, mm -hmm. and being in the, in the, in the mess, mm -hmm. the, the democracy mess, which is right now in Egypt is going on, right? Um, and I haven't really seen much of that in the Occupy. I've, I've seen the unions coming in and, and some of the, the issue-oriented groups uh, sort of wearing the label of Occupy. And I've, I felt a little bit of um, uh, anger about that because they happen to be here. They happen to be organized in some ways. They have some skill sets about making noise, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is good. But it seems to have co-opted. Right. It seems to have taken the, uh, our creative potential away a little bit. And so I, I just want to say, I just want to like... I could finish this off by just saying something keeps telling me to keep thinking about what's going on in the rest of the world and that this is a global movement yep. and they're showing us the way. Yep. Yep. And I don't that's all I want to say. Yep. I guess. This is our Arab Spring. Yeah, and it's it, it really isn't uh, it's not being covered as much, it's not as big, but I think it's it's gonna happen. Yep. I think we need to be prepared that it is going to get big. Because this economic situation we're in ain't gonna change. What, what did you say? 
who said it's it's only not as covered by the media because it's not as violent. Right. So I do want to put out there that stuff in the. We should also remember that the media in the Middle East was far different than the media we got here. And that when you looked at the at the Arab Spring, if you were actually in Egypt during the Egyptian uprising, the Egyptian papers were all like, nothing's happening. Right. There's not. There's not millions of people Absolutely. showing up in the square. Absolutely. So they're doing the same. So they did. So I mean. So we we get a little funky when we think, oh well, we're not getting the same coverage. That well, they got the same. And then when you look at British newspapers, the British newspapers are covering our Occupy stuff way better than. So it's all it's all. I mean, it's all within the country. The regime puts down its foot that you're not going to cover it in our country. You can cover it in all those other countries that it's happening, but you can't cover it when it happens in our country. And you see that. In the U.S., you see that in Egypt, you see that in Tunisia. So I do want us to recognize that too. That what we're seeing is media censorship, which all of them have faced. All of them have dealt with that within their own country. Um, it just so happens that we also that, that we don't live in those countries, so we didn't experience the, the just lies that went out over their media system, and rather we got. A, a different take because we had a different media that I I mean I don't even know I don't I don't know I mean that gets into what uh, anyways I may be getting ahead of myself into where I was thinking those trains but I do want us to remember that that Egypt dealt with the same they're not covering this right. you know if, if you didn't right. if you weren't showing up to the street the square in Cairo you had no idea that anyone was protesting in Egypt and <laughs> Tunisia the same thing even though those crowds were huge <laughs> I, I, yeah yeah, yeah. I might want to add a few things on that. With Egypt, they they were promised for quite a long time that if they went to school, if they did all that hard work, they would have a future. And the economics in that country, along with all the countries close to I feel like I was promised that. Guys, were terrible. The middle class is dying. Right. So, and we have a little bit of a different battle, though. We have a kind of a cultural battle here because we're fighting against our own culture in a way. We have kind of a hit it and quit it culture, a very self-interested culture that doesn't tend to care past like a very short period of time, very short attention span. So in a way, just by maintaining ourselves, that's resilience that a lot of people have never experienced in their very short term, you know. School, going to school is probably the biggest commitment that a lot of kids have made. And, you know, we're actually getting a lot of the younger kids, the high school kids, the underage people. They're going to come out in droves when they have the opportunity. I saw a bunch of them out here when we actually have the encampment. And it's, you know, but we're fighting against the culture that is trying to be taught to them. And in a way, we're a threat because we, we kind of counteract that culture that keeps trying to be shoved in their faces, you know, the conservative. Well, culture. especially with our <laughs> economic solutions from the politicians, of course, being uh, raise school funds, make it harder for California residents to get into a California school because we want to charge more for out-of-state residents, things like that. I mean, we're going to see a lot more um, young out-of-high school kids and, like, mm -hmm. what is going on. Like, and I do believe that you can create drama without violence. I, I know that the easiest way to get on TV is to have a police confrontation and some pepper spray and, uh, you know, you're bound to get on a couple channels. But I think there are other ways to create drama that it, that would bring attention to the media. Like the guys who, um, they, they laid down and put a red carpet over themselves, uh, this red carpet thing. These creative, brilliant statements that people make that get on TV, don't hurt anybody, make a point. They're intelligent, they're uh, inspiring. Uh, and I, I think... Like, we could do that. that. That's the kind of thing that we could do. I don't want pepper spray on my face. I really... <laughs> I hope that that's not part of the deal, because I really don't want to go there. I have some. Uh, <laughs> Maybe some on my pizza. I figured you would be hearing that. Yeah, silent. Right. Okay, I need some on my pizza. I hear it's a pizza topic.
I, you know, I see things from the perspective of once a week because I make a commitment to do something once a week, and David lets me know what's going on on Facebook. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, so I try to do one thing. And every event that Occupy is involved in is wonderful as far as I'm concerned. I, I have, you know, sometimes sort of intense conversations and disagreements with people, but it's always kind of nice. It's always a positive thing. And I think just the, you know, my commitment is minimal compared to most of you guys, but just... <laughs> You've been waiting oh until that yeah. opportunity. So it's, they're not all going to be good, but, you know, and we should be wary about a particular union co-op that, not because they might do good, because they probably would end up doing good, the issue is about a some unions, for example, that gets us scares away the CTA, so they, you know, they don't want to be in this SEIU place, so it's kind of important to kind of keep them like, you know, one degree away from Occupy in a sense, like, ally or an alliance, but not co-opt in. It's very dangerous because you know, it won't go to Occupy because of the propaganda against this and this. So we need to kind of be an example that they need to, that they can sign on to if they want or follow, you know, to kind of be that adaptable there's a bigger picture. I mean, unions are good, at least usually, mostly, but that's kind of looking back to a 1930s solution to 21st century issues and I think what you've got on this sign over here worker owned factories, worker owned industries, that to work toward an age where we don't even need unions because we're not being stepped on that executive class because there is no executive class to work towards something something bigger and better that that it's, that it's maybe even a little hard to envision in this reality, but that that unions are kind of like you said, a mandate on a bullet. That, but I don't have much experience with unions. I know we're going to be talking about this all the way back to Placerville now. But uh, <laughs> co-opting just keeps derailing us from what we're trying to do right now. It will only happen if we allow it. I don't think we will permit anyone to co-opt us. They would have to kill off half the people in this group to shut them up. It's just not going to happen. We're not going to I have a, to a lot of the, you know, our interests are, you know, in big circles, our interests are like that. The thing about band-aids, though, before you rip it it's off, you want the treatments, or else you're just going to be Speaking of non-violent solutions, yeah, I was moving it around. How do you zoom in on it? I think we can agree on a route that you didn't go too far, too little in some cases. Part of the world. Oh, I, I love what you were saying. I, I, Sorry I about the dog thing. Can you say it again? Oh, uh, say it again. Think about band-aids. You don't want to rip them off until you have a treatment. A treatment. Yeah. But what had, had somebody suggested something with, kind of... And then arguing about how to deal with it. What had somebody suggested? I'm sorry. Can you rewind? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just bullet point. Well, we were talking about... Uh, we were talking about the role of unions in the movement and, and how extensive that role should be. And, um, and uh, I was looking at that sign over there and say, where it says worker-owned factories, worker-owned industries. That's kind of what I have thought for a long time, too, is that, is that, that, that businesses should run more like democracy 
and therefore that whole, you know, that whole top-down hierarchy would would kind of go out of style and be in the past. And then you wouldn't really need a union. You wouldn't really need this other, you know, this other separate hierarchical organization that that collects money and has a boss and has its own agenda. I recognize it's the long term high sky dream. Close. It's not all. some kind of organization that can make it happen. You're not going to get 10 workers who don't believe in, in a union or some form of cooperate, cooperation. They don't call it a union. They call it a cooperative. But it's still operating in the same, doing the same thing. Um, you're not going to get a, a worker-owned factory Without some kind of organization, yeah. I've been involved in youth. I've been a shop steward. I, you yeah. know. Okay, but what we're trying to do is look beyond what's holding us back to what we want. Say, I don't, I, mean, I don't know. We could get there. Maybe it's impossible. Maybe whatever. But what I would like to see is this, <coughs> and how we get there from here to there. Well, one, that's the, that's one the indication. Devil in the details. One indication, but, but it's that not. It's there's nothing wrong with saying. I'd like to see a world where this is true, and it ain't going to happen unless we at least envision it. We're never going to get there. Got to start with the idea. Consider the possibility that it, that it might happen. It can't be bogged down by realism, pragmatism. This is how it's always been. This is the way it's always worked. I really want to advance the ship on that and say, what is it? Uh, I dream of things that have never been and ask why not. I want us to be a dream of never thing, things that have never happened before and say why the hell not. Why the hell not? I, I don't mean to shut I, I don't mean to speak, you know, but you gotta, ask yourself, you gotta ask yourself why is it one percent their biggest enemy is labor and unions. Uh, any kind of organizing or collective bargaining or anyone getting together to talk about something they don't want to hear. You know, no argument there. No argument there. there. I think we argue. Yeah, I mean, what I was, was going to say is that, that that's one of the symptoms, if you will. If, if you're somebody who's pro, like, for example, a resource based economy, that would be, you would describe what you're saying there as one of the symptoms, in other words, of the current paradigm. That if you remove the structure and replace it with a different structure, a, a, a deeper, remove the cancer, so to speak, then some of these things that we think are fundamental and inherent and unavoidable and maybe even human nature are gone. And it's really fascinating because I, I guess I didn't realize how many of my assumptions were based on, they were based on what I thought was unavoidable about who we are as species, really. And, and once I, somebody introduced me into an example of a completely different structure and explained to me how human nature is changeable and adaptable and it is, it's a reaction to the environment in which it grows up, it was like, oh, oh my god, all these things that I just took as a given, like that, that couldn't happen, but oh my god, that is a symptom of this structure that's holding it all in. And if we change that structure, so many human behaviors and attributes and motivations and tactics and strategies and behaviors change with it. <coughs> and so, yes, it's like it's something that I don't think we could change that within our current system. That I, that I buy. <laughs> it would have to be a radical change to like create a basic structure that can hold us in a different way and support us in behaving differently. No, I no, I'm dreaming of that big structure. Unless we dream, yeah, and then we find out we can't. When you can't assume that we can't do it, and then not try, and then wonder, well, what if we had tried? So, so I'm just on the 
try the impossible if it doesn't work okay. Yeah, but try. Uh, let's try. Okay. Uh, okay. Dream big. Okay. The impossible. Go where no one has gone before. You want a little more? Yeah. We'll see how it plays out. But I like the I like the I like the team we got. I like <laughs> what we have. The nice. team that we've got here is undefeatable <laughs> if it is united. If it's a united team, we're all working on the same page. And not the only thing that we can do is if they can divide us, if they can discourage us, if they can make us feel helpless, if they can make us say, oh, well, it never works, it never works, and there's always too much this and that and that and that. As long as we can resist that and just say no to all of that, and say, we are going to prove you wrong. Just wait. Just look what we did. No one ever heard of the 99% and the 1% three months ago. That's right. And now it's part of the vocabulary of this country and the world. How'd that happen? We did it. Occupy did it. And that's just the beginning. Okay, I think we are. Is there any last... Final comments. Wrap Just ups. one question, please. Uh, this, so this meeting that we're at right now takes place every Saturday at this time? Two o'clock. Okay. Every Saturday. All right. Woo -woo. Please. Go 99%! Go 99%! Go 99%. Thank you very much for helping us. What's your name? Taya. 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 No. Thank you so much for helping us. And also, feel free to contribute to speak up if you have something to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I love us. I love us too. I love us. I am so cute. That's why. We're such a love. Oh, okay. Can I? We better take this quote. Yeah.